and I know speaks so powerfully about the issues facing so many people here from the Hazara community. Um, Councillor Jim Mamedi, the Mayor, Councillors, uh, also Matthew Kerwin, an old friend, um, the Greens candidate uh, for um, Bruce at this election. Um, I'm here to grieve with you, to stand in solidarity with you, um, to share your pain at these atrocities that yet again we're here to acknowledge that have been occurring in Afghanistan. But also, not just to bear silent witness, but to speak up. These are blatant attacks on Hazaras and Shia Muslims in Afghanistan by extreme radical elements. They have not been stopped, they have not been condemned by the Taliban, the purported government of the country. And I acknowledge your words and call Shabnam um, to not recognise the Taliban as the government of Afghanistan. They're disgusting and inhuman acts, and we've already heard so powerfully. These are not political statements, these are targeted and systemic acts of murder. Targeted for mass outrage at the most vulnerable citizens. School children. School children in a school, one of the best schools in Afghanistan that teaches 30,000 students. Attacks on people simply worshipping their God in the way that they choose at the mosque. Or indeed, it's two years now since the atrocity of murdering pregnant mothers and mothers who'd just given birth to their own children. It's even more appalling that this is being done in the name of religion. This is the furthest thing from religion. It's perverse, it's inhuman, and it perverts the true message of Islam and all world religions that within their doctrines also preach peace. True religions don't preach murder, they don't encourage or condemn murder like this. I just want to read you an email that I received actually only a few hours ago. Since the fall of Kabul, um, many people here I've already spoken to um, and helped. My office and myself have done my very best to help literally thousands of people worried about family and friends. And every morning when I look at my emails, there are some more emails every, every morning from people in Afghanistan waiting for visas um, that have a connection with Australia. We can't help them all. But I read this email only a couple of hours ago and I just want to read these words because they sum, they sum it up. We are Hazara and Shiite people of Afghanistan and we're in a very bad situation. I lost my father a few months ago and I'm worried about the rest of the family. I used to work with the police and I've been threatened by the Taliban since the fall of Kabul and now we just try and hide. They've killed and will kill our people for years. The Taliban have also issued an official written statement that widows and young girls should be forced to marry the Taliban and young boys should go to war with the Taliban. I was worried about my three young sisters and my widowed mother, and I'm worried about myself and my brother. My fiance is in Australia, here in Dandenong, and I've been sponsored for a partner visa. We also applied for humanitarian visas for our family, but there is no response from the Australian government. Please help us process our visas and save our lives. The Taliban will kill us. Last week, more than 100 Hazara and Shiite students killed and injured in Western Kabul, near our house. To whom would, should we take refuge? Who should we ask for help? How do we breathe? How do we survive? They kill us every day just for being Hazaras and Shiites. We don't know the true number of victims from these latest atrocities or indeed over the last two years because the Taliban will not allow any honest reporting. So we only know what we hear from family and friends. But I just want to make three final points. I had not intended Shabnam to talk or even mention the election. This is not, in my view, a political occasion. Um, so I'll just respond to the points in that sense that you made. With regard to the genocide warning, I would note that your words, they're right. These killings now are systemic and they're targeted. They were not part of the conflict the Taliban sought and perpetrated to take control of the country. The United States Holocaust Memorial Museum has now published a statement warning of the serious risk of genocide and crimes against humanity against the Hazaras. And I do believe that the next government of Australia, whether that's my side of politics with the great privilege of forming government or the current government, that's a matter for the people to decide in a few weeks. 
but that the next government Australia needs to restore some of our moral standing in the world and speak up louder and more firmly and work with other nations on these issues and call out these acts. I also acknowledge that the impact on so many people here in our community is made worse because of the delays in visa processing that this email I got just this afternoon refers to. The truth is, this has been a deliberate act of discrimination. For partner visas, which you referred to, Shabnam, it takes on average, on average, about 48 months for someone from Afghanistan to get a visa for their husband or wife. If your husband or wife or loved one is from America or Germany, it takes five to seven months. That is discrimination by the current government. I feel so strongly about that, and I know many people here are waiting to see their, life, their wives and their husbands that have missed their own children growing up. That is not acceptable in this country. I also know that near zero of the thousands of visas that have been promised by the government for humanitarian visas have been processed, and indeed they have not even typed half of the applications into the computer in six months. We need more resources, whoever the next government is, to actually treat people decently and do the job of the government. Not everyone is going to get a humanitarian visa. We know that. Everyone here knows that. But we need to, to do the right thing and at least respond to people's cries for help. The final thing, to acknowledge your questions, the Federal Labor Government will grant permanent refugees permanent protection. There's no place in our country for TPVs or SHEVs. If you're a genuine, genuine refugee, you should have permanent protection and be able to build your life in this country. We need to, thank you. We need to clear the backlog of asylum seekers and again let genuine refugees stay in this country. We need to end the discrimination and treat people fairly. That doesn't mean everyone will receive Australia's protection, but we can do a lot better than we have been doing in recent years. So I thank you, I stand with you. I'm proud to represent this community. And I congratulate the organisers. We need to speak up more loudly, both across the country and across the world. We've heard much of uh, the mass killings, the crimes against humanity in Ukraine that appear to be perpetrated by Russia. And we need to hear more about what's going on in Afghanistan, Afghanistan to the Hazara people. Thank you so much.